Well, hello and welcome uh, to this presentation for our Year 5 Open Evening. Uh, if you're watching this, then it's likely this is on the website. Uh, but I'm actually recording this as parents and students are beginning to turn up here uh, for the Year 5 Open Evening, where they get a chance to see the school in action. And, and what I'd say is that, um, you know, a school is very much more than the sum of its parts. And whilst in this presentation, uh, you might find some bits and pieces that are useful, uh, there is nothing better than coming and visiting a school in action. Uh, so if you don't make it on the year five open evening, you've looked at this presentation and you want to see a little bit about, about what we're about, then please get in contact. I hope this is useful to you now. Look, so we're really pleased that you're considering Borden Grammar School uh, as somewhere that you would like to come as a young person or you would like your child to come if you're the adult here. Um, but this is a little bit, this slide is a bit of a word of warning that you're going to see some familiar faces over the next year from uh, the young person who's going to be going through quite a difficult period um, if they want to come here. And this process is not for the faint hearted. I remember going through it myself with my own daughter around eight years ago, uh, who, who, you know, thankfully has made it to University College London to do an English degree. But I remember eight years ago seeing some of these faces and I thought I'd share them with you now. Firstly, the young person is going to be uh, confused by the various options and choices that they have to have ahead of them and they have to make at a relatively young age. They have to think about what they want, whether they want to go to a grammar school or whether they don't want to go to a grammar school, whether the culture of the school is something they like, uh, the general feel of the school is something they want. And you'll see a face a little like this, because it also involves agreement between parents and, and their young person. And, and that's a difficult thing to do on its own. The next phase you'll see will be uh, surrounding the need to consider the work that goes into preparing to take the Kent test and the Borden test. You know, it does involve some practice, some familiarization, um, not tutoring, and I'll come back to that later, but certainly getting yourself ready both mentally and actually emotionally for what is quite a, a stressful period. Uh, and you're gonna see um, faces that look a little bit like this. And then of course we get the most stressful period itself, turning up for the Kent test uh, to a school to take it, um, going through those various tests, which I've got to say, if you're an adult, you'll find pretty challenging as well. Uh, they really aren't straightforward. Um, and, you know, you will also have to take the Borden test as well if you want to double your chances. Uh, and that means quite a stressful period. And I'm taking it you're going to look a little bit like this. And then even after you've done that, it's not over yet because you've then got that situation of waiting to find out whether you've passed or not. And that uncertainty, um, which is, you know, full of hope. Uh, that, that things have gone well, but also full of uncertainty about what to do if they haven't. So you'll see faces that might look a little bit like this. And hopefully in the end, you know, it will all go according to plan and you'll get what you want uh, and you'll get the school of your choice and you're going to look a little bit like that. But here's, a, a, I guess, a word of uh, warning. Um, you know, don't worry. All of these things are natural, but also I'm a great believer that you will find the school that is right for you. And that if you don't make it to a grammar school, it isn't, really isn't the end of the world. Um, if you make it here, it isn't also the end of the journey. And, and really, you've just got to treat it as a, a part of a learning curve and, and, and basically look at it as an opportunity wherever you go. You will be successful if you have the right approach. OK, so. Your future is what you make it wherever you go. So don't worry too much, but also don't worry if you go through this emotional roller coaster. So whilst you might want to come to Borden because it's a grammar school or the local grammar school, or it has a very good reputation, all of those things might be true and good reasons. Um, you know, you've got to also be aware that, you know, we are a building that is a traditional uh, grammar school building built in the 1920s with some additions and a new addition taking place even now. Uh, and you may view this as a, a traditional school, but it's important to understand that buildings do not make um, schools and that each school have its own unique identity. And you need to work out whether that is something that you want to buy into. So why Borden? And here's a few reasons I think you should choose us. The first is that we have really high expectations and you might expect this from a grammar school, but 
Um, you know, when students come here, they come here having been successful and we're very keen that they don't think that they've already made it. Um, what we want is them to have high expectations. They come through school, uh, high expectations themselves of their peers, of what they're going to achieve and, and everything at the school uh, will be geared towards that. And of course, we're helped by the fact that everybody that comes here already largely is asp are asp aspirational. So those high expectations are part of our culture. We make sure that students are challenged both in lessons and outside of lessons, whether that be through you know, sports, school trips, clubs, etc. But also um, we will challenge them uh, across the curriculum. We have a very robust curriculum um, that we would expect students to um, engage with. And, and, and by and large, all the students do. Uh, and I find that challenge both um, you know, interesting, motivating uh, and part of the, the fun of coming to school. We have high standards. And I'm not really talking here about outcomes. I'm talking here about um, what we expect in terms of behaviour to and from school, outside of school, representing the school, uh, uniform, attendance, um, you know, support for each other, um, respect. All of these things are important. I'm going to come back to values in a second, but we, we have very high standards as a school. And of course, we expect our students to achieve very, very well. Um, you know, all of our GCSE students, we would expect to be aiming to be uh, achieving sevens to nines in old money, that would be sort of A's and above. Um, and we would expect our students from uh, GCSE to stay with us in the main. And for those uh, finishing at post 16, to go on either to good universities and some, in many cases, top universities, or in, in other cases, and we will always support them in this, to go into the worlds of uh, work or apprenticeships where they're going to be highly successful there as well. Um, but we would always expect to have high standards in terms of progression. We have high expectations in terms of our community here. You know, uh, Ofsted described us as a harmonious community. I'm very proud of that. Um, and we expect our students to support each other, to peer mentor, to have anti-bullying ambassadors, to have roles within the school council. Uh, we take our community very seriously and relationships are a key part of, of Borden. And finally, you'll see them as you walk around the school. We, are, we hold our values dear to heart. Uh, the board and values are not just things that are up on walls. They're things that we talk about in lessons and we talk about in our feedback to students and we expect them to take seriously. And at the, at the root of the tree of those values lies effort. What we want is people that come here to do their very, very best. And of course, you don't have to take um, my word for this. Um, whilst it seems only recently, we managed to find that little window in the pandemic where we were, uh, we were inspected. Um, and Ofsted came and visited us and said some really nice things about the school. Um, standards of behaviour are high. People are keen to learn and respectful. They trust their teachers um, and adults and, they, and they're settled and happy at school. Our curriculum is challenging, it has breadth and balance, and teachers guide their students, um, helping support them who are highly motivated to do their best. And I love this comment, this is my second favourite comment from the report, relationships are strong and supportive, and the community here is harmonious. I don't think I've ever seen that in an Ofsted report about being harmonious. That for me is a key selling point of the school, and I'm hoping you see that as you walk around here today. And also included in the Ofsted report were some comments from parents. And again, this is one that I, I particularly liked um, because it talks about how the school tries to support their young person to thrive. It's not talking just about academic outcomes. It's talking about something bigger than that. Uh, and again, I'd go back to the fact that relationships and effort are, are key buzzwords, if you like, about what we expect and what we try to develop in our students. And here are a few pictures over the last year or so um, where some of our students are shown thinking of others. You've got images there of uh, donations we gave, gave to Ukraine, uh, you know, for, for things that were actually sent over in lorries to Ukraine. I had to take two minibuses full of that stuff um, that were collected on one occasion. Um, you've got the um, Christmas fair there from year seven. So if you join us, uh, you'll be doing this in year seven. That's in the centre there, where students in year seven come up with ingenious uh, and uh, quite costly, frankly, um, sort of stalls um, where they will manage to get as much money out of you as possible to donate to the charity of their choosing. Uh, and I must admit, you know, we were 
rooms and rooms and rooms full of it this year uh, where students thoroughly enjoyed uh, bleeding the staff and parents dry of their money as they walked around the school for a good cause. Uh, on the left bottom there, another example where the students either bake or buy cakes to sell, uh, again for charity. Um, on the right hand side there, we run our own uh, Remembrance Day activity, both outside the school and then uh, down at the War Memorial as part of the local community. All, all of these things involve students, you know, our student plays the last post, we have sixth form students speaking, uh, and, and it is a, a good example of how, as a school, we really prioritise thinking of other people. But there are also plenty of opportunities outside of the classroom. Um, you know, there's examples on here of our summer school of the Duke of Edinburgh uh, Award that we've set up this year. And we've got, you know, uh, many, many year 10 students in, uh, uh, involved in. Um, we've also got down the bottom there things like sports day, uh, trips to um, scientific laboratories on the right there. And of course, World Book Day, where both staff and students get involved again in um, in sort of celebrating their favourite book, but also raising a little bit of money for good causes. But it's also important there are opportunities in lessons, and as in most schools, the best lessons that uh, photos uh, get taken in, generally speaking, are science lessons, uh, and you'll see lots of examples of this here. It's certainly one of the things we've done when we've gone into primary schools and when primary schools have visited us uh, is that the students have absolutely loved um, the fact that they get to do science experiments. Uh, and, but also they do other things in lessons that are exciting, whether it be you know, in sport, uh, in, in history, and I'm going to come to visits that they do in a minute, um, but also in you know, things like DT and art, where there's some really uh, innovative and creative uh, things that students uh, love getting involved in. But we also think it's important um, that our students show leadership. Um, we have our peer mentors, our sixth form peer mentors that mentor younger students in the top left there. Um, we've got uh, students uh, on the top right there who are anti-bullying ambassadors that every year we train up in order to help support anti-bullying within uh, year seven, but then they take that forward into year eight and year nine. Um, on the bottom middle there, we've got Hot Chocolate uh, Friday set up by Miss Irinoy, who'll be your head of year next year, uh, celebrating those students that have been, done really good things, whether it be uh, to do with board and values or uh, attendance or positive points from staff. Um, we've got the success, obvious success, uh, on the bottom left there of uh, GCC results last year. And then on the bottom right, we've got um, a rewards day for effort for multiple year groups where uh, they've done really well across the school with me handing out donuts and, uh, and then playing games in the morning uh, in registration time, which uh, students really enjoy. So again, good examples where we prioritise students showing leadership and achieving real success. And then whilst these have taken a little while to start building up again, because uh, obviously the pandemic hit us quite badly, um, you know, there's numerous trips that started taking place again uh, across the school. Um, you know, examples uh, bottom in the middle there are the ski trip that took place this year. Uh, actually, uh, next week we've got uh, a trip to Montpellier going out, one to Barcelona being organised, over Castle, which you can see, um, you know, uh, battlefields trips, geography field trips. Uh, and school musicals. All of these things are now really taking place as well as lots and lots of clubs taking place as well. And the bottom right there you can see is uh, one of our uh, uh, more recent clubs, which is the Dungeons and Dragons Stroke Warhammer uh, club that takes place as well after, uh, after school. Uh, but there are plenty of other clubs, uh, you know, that take place as well. Uh, and this is something that we, we think is important because we want our students to get involved in everything when they're at school and we want to turn out rounded uh, individuals. So one of the things that you will get a chance to do when you come here, um, if you come here, is our Year 7 Transition Day, where students come in from the primary schools and they get to experience a little bit of what Borden Grammar School is really like. And you'll see these are pictures here from the students that are now in our current Year 7 uh, when they visited us last year. And you can see, you know, the looks on these children's faces. Not only are they happy that they've uh, passed, that they've got to Borden Grammar School, they're here enjoying being with friends and the environment and you know this continues as they go through school so I, I guess this is just reassuring that you're not just going to pass and then turn up here on the day in year seven uh, there are going to be plenty of things you can do in in the short term uh, whether it be this or aim higher club um, uh, which you know which will help you get used to uh, joining us at Borden Grammar. So what next for Borden? Well you'll see outside the front of the school we're having a new sports hall, various classrooms and a, a sixth form zone being built at the moment. Uh, quite a big addition to the school. Um, we're also going to have some internal works done. We've just uh, um, 
actually had a SIF bid, a condition improvement fund bid to improve all our heating and boiler systems. Doesn't sound a lot, but it's actually going to cost the school about 1.8, 1.9 million uh, to do that. And that's going to take place over, over the next year, um, together with our new build, which is about a £6 million uh, new build uh, that's taking place uh, and very exciting for the school. It's going to look a little bit like this. I'm not going to go into details in it here, but it will be a three court sports hall about twice the size of our current gym. Uh, which will certainly add a, a much needed capacity to the school. Uh, and that's what it will look like from the side. And there's also going to be um, something on there that links it to the Avenue of Remembrance of Poppy, uh, as well as the name of the school. And inside it will look uh, something a little like this. Obviously a little different to the um, uh, hundred year old uh, parts of the school that you will be walking around uh, as part of today. Much as they have a lot of uh, love and uh, charm to them, uh, this will look a little bit more modern. So what do we expect from you? Well, fundamentally, I've mentioned them already. These are the key values that we want to see in our students. They're the ones that we want to develop as you come through our school, and they're the ones that we want to see you take seriously. Kindness to each other, respect for everyone around you and for your environment, creativity and ingenuity in the classroom, uh, resilience when things go wrong, picking yourself up and keeping going, courage to do the right thing when it really matters, uh, and to try difficult things and underpinning this all effort. If you do these, you won't get go far wrong. So what do you need to do? Well, the first thing you need to do is you've got to register with the Cape County Council uh, to take the test. And you can do this between the 1st of June and the 3rd of July. Uh, you must do that. If you miss that opportunity, then it's likely that you won't be going to a grammar school, whatever. You then need to sit the test, which is on third Thursday, 7th September, so very soon after you come back to school. You may also register and sit the Borden test. This will be the second year of us running that on Saturday, the 9th of September. And this is important because it gives you a second bite of the cherry in terms of trying to get in here. If you were to not pass the Kent test and you were to pass the Borden test, then you would also be offered a place. Um, but you cannot, uh, you cannot take the Borden test without registering for the Kent test. So it's important that you do do that. And then we do not recommend tutoring. We want students to come here of their own volition. And there's a real danger that if uh, students are highly tutored, that they're going to struggle when they come to a, a selective school. But it is important that you familiarise yourselves with the Kent test because you wouldn't expect anybody to sit a test or see a test for the first time when they take it and, and not know the rubric of the exam or not know the type of questions they're going to have to answer. So I'd certainly recommend you do that. Now, if you are somebody that thinks you're unlikely to get that familiarisation through any other route, particularly if you are a student, a disadvantaged student, you know, either free school meals or you um, uh, have a special educational need or you're a looked after child um, or you are a carer, um, then uh, go to the library, speak to Miss Johnson, because we do have a limited amount of passwords available for some software that we've brought into uh, so we can help you out with that. But you know, if you're not sure, speak to her anyway, and she will advise you on that. And we have uh, 150 uh, students' uh, places available. Um, you know, previously, if you look further up our school, we only have 120 to 130 places available. But for the last, this will be the third year, where we've taken 150. Um, that's part of the reason that we've got the, um, the expansion at the front of the school. Um, so cater for that. 15% uh, of these places will go to pupils who have been or are or in receipt of free school meals and who pass that Kent test. Uh, and if this applies to you, then in October, please complete, and it's important you do this, a supplementary information form on our website. It's under the admissions section. And then we have um, priority given to certain postcodes. Why? Well, because we are a community grammar school. And here are the postcodes. I'm not going to go through them now. And again, you'll find this uh, presentation on the website. Um, and those will give you the idea of the priority postcodes. That does not mean that if you are not in those postcodes, you, postcodes, you won't get a chance to come to us. But it means that's where the priority is given. Um, this year, we did have, um, we were pretty full uh, just by those priority postcodes. So it is, um, you know, it is something to, to bear in mind. So anyway, um, thank you for um, turning up tonight. Uh, thank you for watching this presentation, if it's on the website. Uh, and I do hope uh, you come and join us at Borden Grammar School. Uh, we're very proud of our school. We think it's a, a wonderful place to, to be and to work. Uh, and we really look forward to you joining us 
uh, next year.